بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ایم ڈاکٹر محب اللہ وزیر اینڈ دا ٹاپک از ویگسنر لک ویگس اٹ از دا ٹینتھ کرینڈیل نار اینڈ اٹ از اے مکس نار ہیونگ بوتھ سینس اینڈ موٹر پارٹ اینڈ اٹ از دا نر آف دی میڈولا اوبلانگیٹا Functionally, it regulates the functions of a very wide part of the internal viscera of the body. For example, it regulates the function of the heart, the lungs, the bronchi, the, all of the intestine, stomach, small intestine, and ascending part of the large intestine and the right two-third of the transverse colon uh, of the large intestine and it also supplies the some the skeletal muscles of the pharynx and larynx and esophagus etc in this way it is having a very long course from the skull to the neck and from the neck then to the thorax and then to the abdomen that's why it is called as vagus and vagi vagi mean in that is wandering so it is also called as wandering nerve or wanderer nerve and in old very days it was also called as old main nerve because of the reason when it gets stimulated when it was stimulated the appetite of the old man used to improve that's why it was also called as old main nerve okay then the functions we were discussing and it supplies note one clear cut it gives sensory supply it gives sensory supply to external auditory meatus of the ear the external surface of tympanic membrane the root of the auricle and also supplies the concha of the ear then it also supplies the sensory the inner surface of the larynx and pharynx the inner surface of the larynx and pharynx sensory supply is given by the vagus nerve then it gives note important part that it supplies the test fibers from the epiglottis and root of the tongue the taste fibers are being supplied by the vagus nerve and then the motor supply the motor supply to the skeletal muscles of skeletal muscles of the pharynx larynx and upper part of esophagus esophagus upper part of esophagus is having skeletal muscles while the lower part is having smooth muscles that is also being supplied by vagus nerve and then and then the other part being supplied by vagus nerve that is the main part of the parasympathetic function is played by this vagus nerve and this supplies the parasympathetic supplies to the viscera of the thorax that is to the heart lungs trachea bronchi to the viscera of the abdomen stomach is 
the lower esophagus and then the duodenum jejunum ileum and the cecum and the sandic colon and the right to third of transverse colon that is its parasympathetic supply which is given which is also motor and secretory motor to these viscera now keeping in view these functions of the vagus nerve let us discuss what are the nuclei of the vagus nerve the nuclei of the vagus nerve look these are present in the medulla oblongata the nuclei of the vagus nerve these are present in the medulla oblongata and these nuclei are number 1 nucleus ambiguus and number 2 dorsal vagal nucleus and number 3 nucleus of tractus solitarius and number 4 the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve these are the four nuclei of the trigem the vagus nerve out of these two nuclei are sensory and two nuclei are motor as a total there are four nuclei of the vagus nerve now if we want to make it slightly detail of these nuclei and this is for the postgraduate students especially the dander we can also study it and that is number 1 the nucleus ambiguus it is the main motor nucleus it is the main motor nucleus and you can see over here look look the cross section of the medulla oblongata and you can see this is the olive or olive nucleus this is the fire cerebellar peduncle and now you can see look this nucleus this is look this is the nucleus ambiguus and then this is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and then this is the nucleus of tractus solitarius and this is the dorsal vagal nucleus now we are discussing this nucleus ambiguus or main motor nucleus which is situated in the upper part of the medulla oblongata and this is this nucleus this this nucleus nucleus ambiguous in the upper part of medulla oblongata it is it supply the skeletal muscles of the pharynx and then the larynx and then the and then the upper part of the skeletal muscles of the upper part of esophagus it is being supplied by fibers from this nucleus ambiguous and then the other is the dorsal vagal nucleus dorsal nucleus of vagus or dorsal vagal nucleus this one this one is the main parasympathetic nucleus and note it is the special visceral efferent it is the special visceral efferent name indicates it is for the viscera it is the parasympathetic and you know the 75% of the parasympathetic system is being made by this vagus nerve the rest by the sacral segment of the spinal cord now this parasympathetic part of the the dorsal vagus nucleus of the vagus nerve it supplies fibers to the viscera of the thorax that is heart lung trachea and esophagus and then and bronchi and then to the viscera of the abdomen okay and over here it performs the function is motor for the smooth muscles 
and secretory motor for the glands of the GIT and inhibitory for the smooth muscles of the sphincters of the GIT. The function of this dorsal vagal nucleus or parasympathetic part is motor secretory motor for the smooth muscles of the GIT and inhibitory for the sphincters of the the that is its relaxes the sphincters and then the third nucleus is nucleus of tractus solitarius nucleus of tractus solitarius this tractus solitarius nucleus that is special visceral afferent nucleus afferent and it receives the afferent fibers from the heart, from the same viscera which is being supplied by the special visceral efferent, the parasympathetic fibers, it receives the same, or the efferent fibers from almost the same organs, that is the heart, and then the lungs and abdominal viscera, and also note that it receives the efferent fibers, efferent fibers from the barrow, and chemo receptors barrow and chemo receptors present in the aortic sinus and aortic body these barrow and chemo receptors the efferent pulses from this is also being taken by these fibers coming from the nucleus of tractus solitarius in the medulla oblongata this is also present in the medulla oblongata and this nucleus of tractus solitarius is also having the function to receive the taste fibers from the root of the lung and the epiglottis. Okay, and then the fourth nucleus of the the vagus nerve, that is the spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. This one, you look. This nucleus, this you can see, look, this is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve, right over here in the middle of Blangetta. This spinal nucleus of the trigeminal nerve, it is responsible to supply the, as I told you earlier, the skin of the external acoustic meatus of the ear, then the external surface of the tympanic membrane of the ear, and then, root of, then at the root of the auricle of the auricle of the ear, and then it also supplies the sensory supply to the mucous membrane of the pharynx and larynx. This is about the nuclei of the nuclei of the vagus nerve. Now, in short, that I will tell you the. The main motor nucleus, the nucleus in ambiguous for skeletal muscles. The dorsal vagal nucleus is the main parasympathetic nucleus. And the nucleus of tractus solitarius is the afferent nucleus for the taste and for the chemo and barrel receptors and afferent fibers from the same viscera which is being supplied by parasympathetic efferent fibers. And then the fourth is the nucleus of tractus solitarius, the trigeminal nucleus, and that is for the skin of external artery meters and then from the 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 uh, mucus mucus of the larynx and pharynx this is about the nuclei of the vagus nerve and in the next lecture we will discuss then the course of the vagus nerve thank you very much